Welcome to this video lecture. Last class we had started uh, the last unit which is Z transforms and difference equations. So in this lecture we are going to study some elementary properties of the Z transform. So let us uh, start the first one which is linear property. If you look at this, this is Z transform. If you consider for your sequence A into F of N plus B into G of N. You can split this as A into Z transform of the first sequence F of N plus B into Z transform of the second sequence so G of N. Now let us see how this can be proved. So take the left hand side which is Z transform of this which is equal to and you should remember the definition of Z transform is sigma n equal to 0 to infinity F of N Z power minus N. Now here the sequence is A F of N plus B G of N. So this is the input. So in the place of the input, you have to write this into the fixed term, which is Z power minus N will come. And uh, which is equal to, now if you look at this series, you can multiply this A F of N into Z power minus N plus B G of N into Z power minus N. And after multiplying, this A is a constant, which can be taken out of the summation. Plus, and you can split this as second term uh, separately as summation b g of n into z power minus n wherein again b can be taken out of the summation since it's a constant so now look at this is it not z transform of the sequence f of n so this is z of f of n plus b into and this is going to be z transform of the sequence g of n so which is the right hand side so just a simple splitting, you get the property. This property is known as linear property. The second, we have another one, which is known as frequency shifting. Consider the Z of A power N F of N is uh, capital F of Z by A. So now let us try to prove this. Taking the left hand side, which is Z transform of A power N into F of N. So according to the definition, it is uh, sigma N equal to 0 to infinity. The input is here a power n f of n into as usual the fixed term is z power minus n. Now in the next stage write this a power n as z power minus n divided by a power minus n. See this a power n is written as a power minus n. And in the next stage this z power minus n divided by a power minus n. So this power minus n can be taken as a common term z by a the whole power minus n and now when you look at this term you have summation 0 to infinity f of n z power minus n usually we will have z power minus n that is the usual z transform which we call as f of z but here instead of z power minus n here you have z by a power minus n so instead of z here you have z by a so that is why we have written in the place of z, you will have z by a, which is the right hand side. Yes. Okay, now we will go to property 3, which is differentiation in the z domain. And this is that property. When you look at this property, you have here a differential operator. So, this particular property, you cannot just like that, I um, mean, uh, just as the previous one, we cannot start from the left hand side. Whenever you have a differential operator it is always easier to start from the side where the differential operator is sitting because we need to differentiate something right so we are going to start from the right hand side for that first i am going to write what is f of z so what is f of z which is the transform of the sequence f of n so this is the definition sigma n equal to 0 to infinity f of n z power minus n so z transform of the sequence f of n only usually it is capital F of Z. Now let us take D by DZ of F of Z that is differentiating this F of Z. We have sigma F of N into see this is the Z term. So now this Z term when we differentiate we get minus N into Z power minus N minus 1. So this is differential of this. Now here minus N in the next stage Z power minus N you split this as into Z power minus 1. Now after this, see this z power minus 1, you can take out of the summation because there is no n here. The summation is running for n. Here since there is no n, we can take this term out of the summation. 
so that is what is here and uh, this negative sign no this negative sign also has come out so this minus sign we have taken out this z bar minus 1 we have taken out which is written as 1 by z so inside what all the terms we have n f of n z bar minus n and when you observe this see look at this term look at this is it not z transform definition sigma n equal to 0 to infinity s yes, sequence into z power minus n. So, this is z transform but not for f of n. It is z transform of n into f of n. So, that is what we have written here. It is z transform of n into f of n and taking this minus 1 by z to the left side. So, when you take this minus 1 by z to this side, it becomes minus z into dz d by dz of f of z equal to only this term which as I said it is a z transform of n into f of n. So now look at this. See here we have got this is RHS. See here this was RHS and this was given as LHS in the property. So either way we can prove either LHS equal to RHS or RHS equal to LHS. So anyway both sides we have proved as same. Next we have a property called first shifting property which is given like this. Whenever z of f of t is f of z, see here instead of f of n, we are having the time function f of t. Then z, z of e power minus a t f of t is going to be this. Okay, now let us prove this. So taking the left hand side, z transform of e power minus a t into f of t. The definition is sigma n equal to 0 to infinity. First we need to write the input. So what is the input function here? e power minus a t into f of t into z I mean the fixer term what is the fixer term z power minus n now this is in terms of t so whenever we have function in terms of t immediately we have to replace everything in terms of n using this transformation see t equal to n into capital T where t is variable time function n is variable but this capital T will not be variable it's just a time period which will be a constant Okay, anyway, this small t we are going to replace as n into capital T. And this small t is n into capital T. So, after replacing, you have like this. Now, look at this term. So, summation f of n t e power minus a n t into z power minus n. So, you can club these two. See, you can club these two. Both the terms is having power minus n. So, we are clubbing these two and we are writing as z into e power minus a t, I'm sorry, z into e power a t whole power minus n. See here you have whole power minus n, here you have whole power minus n, which can be written like this. See these two can be written like this. z e power a t the whole power minus n. Now look at this term. You have f of n t, that is here since it's a uh, time function, we have n t. Instead of z power minus n, see so usually in the z transform definition you will have z power minus n. But here instead of z power minus n, we have z e power a t power minus n. See here z e power a t power minus n. So the formula is the same but instead of z here you have z e power a t. So the final answer is going to be instead of f of z, it is going to be f of z e power a t. See just comparing. So, is it not your right hand side? This is the function we have to prove. Look at this. See, we have reached the right hand side. Yeah. Now, the fifth property is uh, called second shifting property. So, this is the second shifting property. The transform of f of n plus 1 is given like this. So, again, let us prove this. Taking the left hand side, z transform of z of, I mean, z transform of f of n plus 1 we have taken and as usual the formula of z summation n equal to 0 to infinity first you should write the input into the fixer term what is the fixer term z power minus n now look at this in usual z transform you uh, we will have f of n z power minus n but here you have f of n plus 1 so we are going to make a small substitution this n plus 1 you make a substitution as a single variable yum so let us call this n plus 1 as m and when you are making a variable substitution like this the limits also may change. So let us look at the limit when n is 0 
See here, when n is 0, m will be 1. And when n is infinity, when n is infinity, m also will be infinity. So the limits of m will be 1 to infinity here. So that's what we're going to substitute. See, summation now it has become m starting from 1 to infinity. And this n plus 1 has become m. And z power, see minus n. See here, when you look at minus n, n is going to be m minus 1. See from here, n will be m minus 1. So what is going to be minus n? 1 minus n. So that's what we have written here. And look at this. This can be splitted as z power 1 into z power minus m. That z power 1 is z which is taken out of the summation. So here you have sigma m equal to 1 to infinity f of m z power minus m. And when you look at this, summation is starting from 1 to infinity. But we need for z transform summation should start from 0 to infinity. It means the 0th term is missing here. So we are going to add the 0th term. What is the 0th term here? That is uh, by putting m equal to 0 f of 0 z power 0 minus 0. See that's what we have written here. That is the 0th term whichever is missing we are adding that. Since we are adding this term we, uh, to compensate we have to subtract the same term. So that's what is done here. Now look at this. Summation is 1 to infinity plus this is the 0th term. So you can club these two and you can write as summation starting from 0 to infinity. See this is all terms from 1 to infinity. This is 0th term. So adding these two, you can write the summation from 0 to infinity. And this last term will be here. That is left of this last term is minus f of 0. Z power 0 is 1. Now look at this. Is it not your original Z transform definition? Yeah. So this is going to be our Z transform of f of n or f of m. Just a name is different here. Instead of n, here you are having m. But of course, the answer is going to be the same, capital F of Z. So in the place of this, you can replace capital F of Z minus F of 0. I think this is the right hand side. See, Z into F of Z minus F of 0. We have reached the right hand side. So this is known as second shifting property where Z of F of N plus 1. See, Z of F of N plus 1, the final value is this. You can uh, make use of this property and you can arrive at these two results also which is given as corollary. So z of f of n plus 2 will be, this is f of n plus 1, but z of f of n plus 2 similarly if you proceed and you can, uh, if you prove you will get this result. z squared into f of z minus 2 terms will be subtracted. Similarly z of f of n plus 3 will be, here z squared is there, for this z cube will be there outside and 3 terms will be subtracted. So, making use of the similar proof, you can try to solve or prove these two properties also. And uh, using the concepts, whatever you have learned, try to prove these properties also. See, this uh, z of f of n minus n naught is actually z power minus n naught f of z. This particular property is called a time shifting property. So, when you start this property, you may have to make use of this uh, substitution. So, I have given this as a hint. Similarly, another one, uh, z of f of m minus n will be capital F of 1 by z. This is also a property which is called time reversal property. So, try out these two properties on your own. Thank you.